we will look at Revelation chapter 18. So I'm going to show you something really interesting here, but also I'm going to do it in a defensive manner. So some of you have already heard me prove several times that Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church. There is no doubt about that. But surprisingly, there's a lot of people online who think Babylon is America. So no, it is not the United States of America, trust me. I'm going to show you why it's going to have to be the Roman Catholic Church. There's undoubtedly no doubt about that. But let's look at this side. The reason why they think it's America is because of overseas trade, commerce, and entertainment. And the best country to qualify for that would be America. So we'll look at chapter 18, verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon. That mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls and fine linen, and purple and silk and scarlet, and all thy and wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble. And I can go on and on and on. But basically you see all of this, rich in commerce and overseas trade. Then you'll notice right here that in verse 14, and the fruits that thy soul loved, lusted after thee are departed from thee. Look at verse 15, the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. And then you'll notice at verse 19, and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. Then look at verse 22, the entertainment. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman and whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. So notice right here that these verses seem to show that America would be the most appropriate nation for having merchants with overseas trade, commerce, all other nations making deals with them, as well as entertainment. And we know that America is rich in that. So that's their argument. But how we can argue about that is this, is that the Roman Catholic Church as well is rich in that. Now they would argue this, that the Vatican state, it does not have that kind of, especially overseas trade. They don't have that kind of commerce and they don't, let alone Hollywood entertainment. But here's the thing that they've got to understand. What they've got to understand is that the Roman Catholic Church, its headquarters, the Vatican, is right there. But their influence is worldwide in commerce, entertainment, and even overseas trade. The reason why they don't think so is this, is because what they do is that they only look at standard history, what you learn in schools. Traditional schools, so they're going to follow the blind school system, I guess. Traditional schools teaching, which is true, is that the Roman Catholic Church Empire during the Dark Ages, they ruled over the world. But what happened is it's not the empire and the rulership over the world now, obviously how we see it. How we see it is that it's just one of the powers, but America would be a really a uh, more powerful country, as well as other countries around the world. But here, you got to understand something here. Is Babylon called public Babylon or mystery? It's mystery Babylon. So these Jesuits and the Catholic Church, they're not going to expose everything. That's a matter of fact, even traditionally saying. Traditional school history, we know the Vatican, they don't reveal all their secrets. A lot of it is mysterious. So how they rule, how does Babylon rule? In mystery. That's what you got to understand, in mystery. It's not in public, it's a mystery. And if you're a fan of end times and conspiracies, then you didn't dig deep enough. You probably just as went as far as Alex Jones and other weird conspiracy theorists. But here's something that they've got to understand. If you study the Jesuits, They went in mystery, in hidden form. They influenced politics, commerce, business, education, and everything in the world. 
Now, the two things that we're going to be focusing on is this. We're going to be focusing on commerce, so overseas trade, commerce, and as well as entertainment. We'll be looking at that. But if I go into politics and other powers, you're going to be shocked how powerful they are. But I'm only going to cover those two things that people have a problem with Babylon being the Catholic Church, mainly entertainment and commerce. So first of all, commerce, you got to understand this. This is by M. F. Cusack, 1896, who's a converted nun of Kenmare. And then the title is The Black Pope. Quote, the Jesuit, on the contrary, has always been clamorous for power and wealth and has in consequence occupied himself both individually and collectively with the rich rather than the poor. Here's another one by, now this is very interesting. This is by Marina Oswald, 1964, the wife of Lee Harvey Oswald. Quote, the answer to the Kennedy assassination is with, here's the key, the Federal Reserve Bank. The people who supply the money are above the CIA. So we know this central banks, they're very powerful, and even conspiracy buffs will know that, as well as people into end times. Central banks and banks are like the really powerful elites. But here's something right here which is interesting, is that the ones who gain the money, the ones who have all the money, are the ones on top. And that's why some people will assume it's Rothschilds, Jews, uh, Freemasons, and other bankers, or top elites who are bankers. But you got to realize this, Jesuits are involved in that. They don't realize that. If you have power in the central banks, central banks, you control the world pretty much. Here's another one. This is by Stephen and Haskell, and it's uh, titled The Story of the Seer of Patmos. This is what he had to say. The hatred which Europe once manifested toward the central ecclesiastical power, the Roman Catholic Church, is fast disappearing. There will be a gr general agreement to exalt Rome. The wealth of all nations is about to be given into our hands. The United States will place the unbounded resources of this country in the hands of the same power. Okay, so so far we, we know from these quotes that, okay, Rome is going to have control over the powers of the United States and the wealth. One, okay, we know Rome will do that. And we know another thing, the Federal Reserve Bank, central banks, are the ones who control the world and all that. If you combine these two dots together, the Jesuit and the Federal Reserve Bank and central banks, then you got it. But let's keep reading. This is by Edmund Paris. He's a French historian. This is at 1964. The title of his work is The Vatican Against Europe. The clergy, so the Roman Catholics or Jesuits, in order to increase or keep its riches, have always interfered with the political and economic life of the nation. The war industries offered a profitable investment. The previous help given, here's one of the big bankers, by Morgan's Bank, the biggest bank in the world, had become the Holy See's power of attorney in America. So you got to realize this, these bankers, you got to realize these bankers are connected with Jesuits. Peter David Beter, in 1974, at the council, 1961 to 1967. Uh, the work is the Fort Knox Gold Scandal. And this guy, he is actually uh, graduated from law. And he actually was involved in politics. So these people that I'm quoting, they're not just normal people or just conspiracy theorists. These are people who have experience with Roman Catholicism or powerful connections. Quote, America is gold poor. There is nothing left in Fort Knox except junk gold. That's according to him, but we'll ignore that part. Here's the part you want to hear. In 1934, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt turned over the nation's gold supply to the Federal Reserve System as a gift. So we, there's no doubt the Federal Reserve Bank and central banks, they're the ones that dominate a lot of power. Here's another one. Avro Manhattan, his book is really the work. It's called The Vatican Billions, proving the Vatican is really powerful in money. In 1952, Bishop McShay, for the papal representative, admitted the purchase of gold 
by the Vatican. He added that a large number of papal ingots were held in the Federal Reserve vaults in New York. See that? There are connections with central banks, the Federal Reserve Bank, and the Jesuits. There are, there are involvement. So you got to realize this, is that these kind of pe people, there's no doubt, Jesuits, they do have powers with central banks. You'll see Roman Catholics in central banks and they have powers. And these are sources that I'm not quoting that are just ordinary people. These are people who had experience with Catholicism. These are people who were involved in certain powers. So we see that in commerce, if we were to believe this, that Babylon is in mystery form, which the Bible says it is, and when we look at these documentations, it would make sense because Jesuits, they can't do that publicly. Otherwise, what do you think the whole world will do, right? The whole world, we, we all think that we all live in our own democracy. So the Jesuits, they have to play smart. So they go underground, and by connecting themselves with central banks, then they can control commerce. But here's another interesting thing. So I think it's Peter David Beter, the one who I quoted before. I believe he also said this, is that he also said that if you look behind the picture, it's the banks that control all of our politics and our government powers. So he was urging them that we got to do something about this. And then you see Jesuits also involved with these banks. <clears throat> so there's no problem right there that we see the Roman Catholic power. They are very rich in trade and commerce. Why? Because you got a lot of rich bankers, merchants, and all those people there who are connected to the Vatican. And it's a matter of fact that the Rothschilds, one of the top elites, and also where people don't deny he's one of the top elites, who's rich in all this kind of stuff and controlling with banks, commerce, etc. His title is the guardian of the Vatican's bank. You understand. So if you also study this, I'm not giving the quotations on this one, but if you also study the Knights of Malta, certain Knights of Malta and those kind of members who are involved in banks, they're all over. They're all over. Here's another thing concerning entertainment. Entertainment is not a brainer as well. It's a no-brainer. There are Catholics are all over. In fact, there's even the the official website www.catholic.org. Even that kind of website has an article title that reads, "Catholicism in Hollywood, not as rare as you might think." Title of the article. It's by Kenya Sinclair, August 10, 2016, at Catholic Online. But I'm going to explain here also concerning about entertainment now. So we see Rome in power, Roman Catholic in power, through commerce. And of course, they have to do it in mystery form. Not only that, you got documentations that support it. But also, you also have entertainment. And this one is public. This is public. But it's not really well known. Why? Because all we know is about the liberals' ideals in Hollywood. And if you look outside of that and see the religious background in Hollywood, you'd be surprised how many Catholics are involved in entertainment as well. These would fail. Now, I'm going to mention these celebrities, and you probably had no idea that these celebrities are practicing Catholics right now or previously had Catholic backgrounds. These would fail to include Mark Wahlberg, Al Pacino, Martin Sheen, Martin Scorsese, Sylvester Stallone, Spencer Tracy, Sean Connery, Nicole Kidman, Bradley Cooper, Sofia Vergara, Michael Jordan, Mel Gibson, George Clooney, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jimmy Kimmel, Conan O'Brien, Stephen Colbert. And these are the three that are feeding propaganda news to our younger generations, you got to understand. Tom Hanks, Kobe Bryant, Bob Newhart, Jack Lemmon, Liam Neeson, Matt Damon, and I didn't, there were just too many, so I didn't list them out, but I was surprised. These are currently practicing Catholics or had Catholic backgrounds before. So you got to realize this, this religion, Catholicism, is very more widespread than you think. It's more widespread than you think. These would not even fail to include the singers. So we see singers right here at verse 22, right? So we saw the entertainers, the celebrities, but let's even talk about singers. Frank Sinatra, famous one. Selena Gomez, 
Jennifer Lopez, the one who sang Lord of the Rings Enya, Scott Weiland, Bruce Springsteen, Nicole Scherzinger, Dean Martin, Lil Wayne, Howie D from Backstreet Boys, Matt Maher, and here's something interesting about Matt Maher. He's the one who wrote songs for Hillsong, for Toby Mac, Chris Tomlin, David Crowder, and do dozens of Christian popular singers. And that's a public knowledge. This is mainstream public knowledge. It's just not really well known. By the way, you want me to add this? Let me add these famous people responsible for filming. They graduated from Jesuit school. The famous Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock. You also got James Warner Bella and the one who was responsible for authorizing the exorcist, Paul Blatty. If that's not enough, let me blow your mind even more with, more with this. Hollywood film, you know how they started Hollywood film? This foundation of Hollywood, its filming would not have happened had it not been for a Jesuit. And that is public knowledge. The guy's name, you can look him up, Athanasius Kircher. Athanasius <clears throat> Kircher, Jesuit. You can find this at Rome Reports, January 4th, 2014. It's even on YouTube. The title, this is interesting, look, the title of this, Athanasius Kircher, the Jesuit who invented early cinema. You know why? Because he's the one, because Jesuit's job is to convert the whole world. So Kircher wanted to figure out a way where they can put Catholic knowledge upon these people. And he realized the best way is through filming. So during his years, what he did was he, he had the thing called like a black magic lantern. And this device, it was able to show pictures. Through that, that's why directors, filmmakers are able to make Hollywood film today. You got to realize this, uh, people who think they know so much about end times and conspiracies and they go into la la land and fairy tale and abstract stuff and weird stuff, it's, you'd be surprised how much of an amateur they are. They're much more amateurs than you think. There's a lot of sources they didn't look at and these aren't sources that I'm quoting that are amateurish either, you understand. So how do we know this? How do you get safe in this? Because when you go strictly with the Bible, and then when you looked up all these facts, you're going to be surprised how much the Bible lines up. So here's another thing. Let's also look at the scriptures themselves. All right. So now, not only we got historical, mainstream knowledge, as well as documented sources proving that Rome can have that kind of power, let's also look at the scriptures, because that's the most important one, right? So here's the thing that they've got to understand. First of all, I don't know why they don't understand this part, okay? If they assume, look at verse 2, with uh, a chapter 17, verse 2, chapter 17, verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth, okay, all these nations around the world, they make a deal with Babylon, right? But look how God negates it. Have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Huh? Really? Here's another one. You got to understand this is that if you really believe that the kings of the earth, when they're doing overseas trade, commerce, and entertainment, here's a simple and easy question. Does God consider it a sin for you to do commerce and trade with America? Boom. That's proof. Oh, but it actually says overseas trade and commerce. Yeah, but God considered it as a sin. If it's a secular nation, it's not a sin. But is it a sin when you do it with a church state? Is it a sin when you do it with a religion kind of power state? Yes, it is. I don't have a clean conscience to do that. That's the thing. That's why we always believe. That's why democracies have existed in, a, in our world today, right? Separation of what? Church and state. Separation of church and state. God considers it, is it a sin when you do this commerce and entertainment and with a religious kind of form? 
If it's totally secular, that's one thing. But with a religion behind it, it is a sin. There's no doubt. You, that, that proves it's a Vatican. But if that's not enough, look, I'm going to go through evidence after evidence. That should be convincing enough. But look at verse chapter 18, verse 20. Chapter 18, verse 20. Did America persecuted our apostles? Look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye what? Holy apostles and prophets, for God what? Hath avenged you on her. America never do that to apostles and our prophets. But didn't Rome? Wasn't Rome always the one? Boom. You have to argue this is Roman power right here. And, it, and what happened to this Roman power? It became mystery form. Not only that, if you think that's not good enough, I mean, just, <laughs> just look at the evidences right here. First of all, look at verse 3. Who is dressed at verse 3? Now, I showed this in a separate video, so I'm just going to go through this quickly to overload the evidence. Look at verse 3 and 4. Who's decked in purple and scarlet? Who has a golden cup? Doesn't the Catholic Church have that? Amen. Here's another thing right here. Let's look at all the evidences right here. Not only that, the woman has a golden cup at verse 4, right? A woman with a golden cup. We're not talking about the Statue of Liberty with a torch, okay? Let's go as close, literally, with the Bible as much as we can, right? Because that's what we are. Amen. All right. Amen. Look at right here. The woman had a cup in her hand, right? Guess what? You got to understand this. In the Catholic Jubilee of 1825, Pope Leo XII, he, he had a medal honoring himself, picturing the church as a woman holding a cup in her hand. And it had the Latin inscription, Sedit Super Universum. And you know what that Latin inscription means? The whole world is her seat. And guess how that matches with Revelation 17. Look at chapter 17, verse 1. This woman sits on the waters, right? You know what the waters represent? The waters, if you keep reading at Revelation, it represents the kings and the nations that she's ruling over. Look at verse 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. See that? And what did that coin said about the woman holding a cup in her hand? The whole world is her seat. Look, you, you gotta, let's be honest, okay? If you, sometimes I wonder this, sometimes people, they want to believe in what they want to believe in. And guess what? You're no different from people out there who don't know conspiracies. Some of you prideful conspiracy theorists want to cling on what you want to believe in, and you think that, oh, I'm not blind, I'm not blind, and yet you will, be bl you will continually say America is Babylon when you've got to be blind to see that plainly from scriptures. And not only that, we saw the evidences through documentations and history and mainstream. Another thing is this, is that you also saw that the woman, what is she on? She's on seven mountains, right? At Revelation chapter 17, when you read it. Verse 9, here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, right? Rome is, Rome is known as the city of what? The seven hills. Now look, I can go on and on and on. There's a lot more evidences, but I think I'll do one last one, which is convincing. The most convincing part is look at chapter 17, verse 6, and also look at chapter 18, verse 24. 17, 6, and 18, 24. Did America shed that much blood with, with martyrs? There is one book specifically titled Martyrs, and you know who was connected to that from beginning of apostles yep. to end? Rome. Rome. Amen. Who shed the martyr's blood? That's why it makes sense the apostles, prophets, and the saints in heaven throughout all time rejoicing yep. when Rome is burned to the ground. You can't deny it. That's Roman Catholic. Now, some amateurs, they're going to argue, oh, no, no, this is referring to the tribulation time period. No, because you already read apostles and prophets. 
So this is talking about all time, not just tribulation. There's no doubt this has to be room. But let me convince you one more thing. Verse 16, chapter 17 and verse 16, right? She's burned. And notice <coughs> verse 20, uh, chapter 18, verse 20. God says he avenged the saints when he punished Rome. How did he avenge them? How did the saints feel satisfied? Burning. Why? What was the Roman Catholic Church infamous for? And they did literally hundreds of thousands. I kid you not. It's thousands upon thousands. Yeah. Burning. Makes sense why they would rejoice. Not only that, even pagan Rome did burning as well. Polycarp, who was trained under the Apostle John, he was burnt. Look, if there's no doubt from all of this, it, you have to argue Roman Catholic Church. It doesn't matter. Rome, Rome, and Rome. Not only that, I showed you in other videos too that the Antichrist undoubtedly is connected to Roman power. We saw that clearly from Daniel 7, Daniel 2. We see the evidences. This is plain. We looked at plainly, okay? And we even had supporting documentations on that that are not amateur sources either. I can go on and on and on. If you don't believe Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church, and you still insist Babylon is America, you have to be really blind.